Well, we thought we'd heard it all when we had to hear that apparently Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina smells like cedar, or at least that's what she says regarding her smells like my vagina candle. But uh, I'd like to get off her vagina candle and focus on what is happening in court. With me, high profile entertainment lawyer Daryl Cohen joining us out of the Atlanta jurisdiction. Daryl, I don't think she scored any points in court when you've got the guy, the retired optometrist, stating that he had four fractured ribs, broken ribs, some doctors would say, and he says brain injury. And when she was asked to respond, she says, well, I did lose a half day of skiing. That's not helping anything, Daryl Cohen. Nancy, I think that was the dumbest thing that her lawyer could have possibly told her. She should have said, I'm sorry, I didn't do anything. He collided with me, and I'm really sorry that that happened. Not, I lost a half a day of skiing. Absurd, ridiculous, and foolish. What do you make? Well, I guess there's nothing to make of it, because in a civil case, you can't keep either the plaintiff or the respondent, that's the optometrist or Paltrow, from taking the stand. Unlike in a criminal case, explain. Well, in a civil case, they have to take the stand because if they don't take the stand, there's going to be money that he is not going to get or money that Gwyneth is going to lose. Whereas in a criminal case, you cannot be compelled to testify against yourself. And sometimes, most times, quiet is the better part of valor. I would say complete silence in, in most cases. I completely Don't even agree. say anything. I'm certainly not comparing her to Alex Murdoch, but we saw what he did for his own case. It was like shooting a torpedo right at himself, uh, inflicting mortal wounds to his defense when he took the stand. But in this case, since it's civil, you can't refuse to take the stand. Uh, you have to take the yeah, stand. If either you're called, side. You have no choice. I've seen civil cases, Daryl, uh, where let's just say you're representing a plaintiff, I'm re representing a respondent. You're, you have to put your case up. The first thing you do, is call the respondent. Like the very first thing the optometrist would do is call Paltrow. Can't do that in a criminal case, but I've seen it done that way. The internet is hysterical right now because uh, Paltrow, when asked about her, what she lost, what the damage was, she says, well, we lost a half day of skiing. I wonder how that hit the jury. But another thing, we learned earlier that on day two of the trial, she, her outfit was worth $88,000. Now, that may be lost on the jury. I, I wouldn't know the price of her necklace, which was I think was 60 something thousand. If it bit me on the neck, I would not know, oh, that's a Cartier necklace. That would not mean anything to me. But that's more than most people make in a year. Nancy, it's absurd, but she is wearing black, which is important because she's looking dull. She doesn't want to hurt anybody. She doesn't want to offend any jurors. She's wearing her hair down, which is not offensive. She's not wearing it as Amber did above her head, looking condescending and haughty. She's doing uh -oh, wait exactly a minute. When I wear she... my hair in a bun, I'm condescending and haughty. It's normally because there's nothing else I can do with it besides just stick it in a bun. So oh, in Nancy, your mind, you're that's condescending. Don't even start with me. So in your mind, hair in a bun is condescending and haughty. Note to if self. If she's wearing it the way she did, and I'm talking Amber, wearing it in a bun, wearing it up, wearing the type of clothing and outfits that she wore was condescending and haughty. Yes. She finally changed. She okay. finally changed. She got the, the good stylist as opposed to the foolish stylist. Luckily, the jury, I'm sure, has been instructed not to look on the Internet or they would see tons of memes that have cropped up since she said, well, we did lose a half day skiing. Another thing I've noticed that even the, I'm referring to him as the optometrist, even the optometrist lawyer seemed to be sucking up to Gwyneth Paltrow. Of course, it's his day in the sun. The, optom the optometrist, the lawyer, it's their day in the sun. Five minutes of gloom, or did I say fame? Let me ask you a question regarding civil cases, because you've certainly tried more civil cases than I have, um, which are very different from criminal cases that were my expertise. Can prior similars 
come in in a case like this, and I'm not saying that Gwyneth Paltrow has had a prior ski accident. I'm referring, I don't know if you remember this or not, but there is, there may even be video of it, of Gwyneth Paltrow riding a Vespa motorcycle and cutting off a moving school bus, apparently without looking, nearly causing an accident, and she had her nine-year-old daughter, Apple, on the back of the scooter. That happened a while back, but in both cases, um, there was recklessness regarding the Vespa scooter incident and alleged recklessness in the skiing accident. In both cases, her children were involved. The plaintiff in this case says she was actually turned away when one of her children said, Mommy, watch me ski! And she turned away and slammed into him. How are things, incidents like that, used in a civil case? I mean, I know how to get them in as a similar tra transaction in a criminal case, but how about civil? Nancy, you have to use discovery and try to get it in with interrogatories and then depositions. And I can assure you the judge has ruled on this a long time ago as to whether or not they're actually similar transactions or separate and apart. And it's not a course of conduct or it is a course of conduct. That would be the judge's decision long before the trial. I'm looking at her outfit today. I think I'm looking at the $88,000 outfit. She's not wearing black. Jackie, what is she wearing? What is she wearing? this morning when she came into court. She's wearing kind of a cream cardigan um, and, and a lot of jewelry. You know, I'm looking at the plaintiff, Terry Sanderson, who is a retired optometrist. They got his daughters on the stand and they did not paint a pretty picture. Base, I don't mean that he was abusive, except maybe, maybe um, stern, verbally harangued them. That's a, put your, get your own daughter up there and she trashes you, ouch. Not smart. Again, lawyers have to be smart. They don't make the case as far as the facts are concerned. They make the case as far as the jury is concerned. And you have to know what you're getting yourself in for. Foolish, foolish, and by the way, did I say foolish? Let me ask you this. Why do you think, since this claim is, I, I believe he first sued for $3 million, then the judge re got rid of the $3 million claim. He's now suing for $300,000. Um, why do you believe Paltrow didn't settle? I mean, her Goop website is worth $250 million alone. And by the time this is done, she'll probably pay, what would you pay a civil lawyer for a high profile case? A hundred grand, more? Nancy, more. But why didn't she settle? I'll tell you in my view why. Because she can't buy this type of publicity. She can't advertise with this type of money. She has got an audience that she would not otherwise have, and Goop is going to be goopy with money. Hmm. Ooh, I like it. Goop is going to be goopy. So I, I take it you adhere to the Barnum and Bailey theory of PR. Uh, I don't care what you say about me. Just talk about me. Bad press is, is good press? What are you saying? Any press is good press, depending on who you are. That's not what I do personally, or that's not my philosophy. But in this instance, any press for her is good press. She looks good. She doesn't look like a movie star. She acts good. She's not acting as an Oscar or an Emmy winner because this is TV, so it could be an Emmy. She's acting as if I'm just here and I'm sorry. I don't think I would have had her testify the way she did, but she looks good. The stylist is good. Her lawyer, eh, his lawyer, eh. I've been and a little put off go. by her lawyer. Don't know him personally, uh, but too. her lead lawyer, Steve Owens, is a little off-putting. Um, for instance, he keeps trying to tell the judge what to do. Now, I don't know how many judges you've been in front of, but I've been in front of a lot of judges. And I think both of us can say a lot of them aren't that smart. But I, some of them are very, very smart. But no judge, whether they're smart or they just fell off the turnip truck, likes to be told what to do. And her lawyers are repeatedly trying to tell the judge what to do. And it's really irritating him. Nancy, it's stupid because the jury sees exactly what's on his face. They're looking at the judge's body language. This is 
pure stupidity. And I'm wondering if it's not an insurance company that's representing her and not the lawyer of her own choosing. Just, Ooh, just ask it. That's a thought. Well, another thing, Owens, uh, in, uh, in addition to repeatedly trying to tell the judge what to do, made jokes that onlookers at the accident did not know that Gwyneth Paltrow was divorced from the, quote, Coldplay guy. Um, do you really believe, are you so self-centered that you think the world knows that it's um, Chris Martin? I mean, why would Five anybody, why would the jurors or the victim know the name of uh, the guy, Paltrow, divorced, excuse me, consciously uncoupled. Who could forget that? I mean, I don't, I, I feel like it's kind of demeaning, expecting everybody to know all you, about your divorce proceedings from 10 years ago or however long ago it was. Nancy, I would have said none you, none your business. But yeah, it's demeaning, it's foolish. But again, if he wins, he's smart. If he loses, I'm right. Well, guys, Gwyneth Paltrow, better, for better or for worse, has taken the stand. And I would say that she's really being herself. I don't think she's trying to be a different persona than what she really is, which is really irritating to a jury. I learned that the hard way, Daryl Cohen. Who did I try this case in front of? I think it was Judge Jeanette, a former prosecutor, a no-nonsense judge, and I had a stripper and her flunky walking down some back alley in inner city Atlanta right after she got off the stripper pole and she was dressed in a cheerleading outfit and she got robbed. Well, you know, I said, oh, um, are you steadily employed? You know, where do you go to church? Blah, blah, blah. The jury looked at me like, what? We know she's a stripper. I'm like, okay, you're a stripper. You can't hide things from a jury. They find out. So at least Gwyneth Paltrow is being herself on the stand, whether it's being pouty or condescending. But it kind of adds to her credibility. I agree. I agree. And by the way, Isaac Jenner is my old roommate in the DA's office, so we're buds. I, I tried my very first, very first jury trial in front of him. It was a theft by shoplifting, but I can tell you nothing was taken out of the store. That was a hard one to win. But I did manage to get a conviction on attempted shoplifting because he did cut down, I think it was a CD player, from the display and stuff it down the crotch of his pants and try to get out the door. He chickened out and left it inside. That said, that's a whole other story. But Jenrette, great, great judge. Um, and he absolutely would not want anyone to tell him how to preside over a case. But how do you think this, the optometrist, Mr. Robinson, compares to Gwyneth Paltrow as far as how is this testimony going to come off? Because she's very at ease and poised. In fact, a couple of times I thought she just had a big fat doobie out in the hall. Nancy, he is not seeing straight. And as an optometrist, he needs 20-20 vision, not the vision he's using. Was I that a joke? That I think it's somewhere in there was a joke. Okay, go ahead. Use it as you will. Well, but noted. I think he, so he could do duly better. Duly noted. And I got to tell you, I think he's made a mistake. I think his lawyer is not good. But I do think that the reason that Gwyneth did not settle, she's making more money, a lot more money than it's costing her. How do you think this or is going to help her. Goop? Uh, any publicity is good publicity when you're selling something. People who have never heard of Goop will go to the website. People who never considered buying. Do you mean to tell me how the, much is a vagina candle? Uh, come on. I knew you'd looked it up. Don't even act like you have to look down. Jackie says the vagina candle is $75. Are you telling me, Daryl Cohen, high profile entertainment lawyer, that you've gone to Goop? I have never been on the Goop website. I have never purchased and likely never will. But I can guarantee you there are the guys who are thinking, hmm, vagina candle, buy it. Never know what might happen. Okay, you know what? I'm not good. even going to explore that. I'm not going into the mind of Daryl Cohen. That said, goop or no goop, we know that the retired optometrist, Sanderson, is taking the stand. We wait as justice unfolds.
Goodbye.